the Iowa Hawkeyes arrive on Melrose Avenue just behind us on the Hawkeye team bus. Hawks come in undefeated, ranked fifth in the country, looking to continue the uh, streaks that they've developed, looking for their 10th win in a row, first time since uh, 2015. Looking for the 15th straight non-conference win and the 26th straight game in a row, this defense without surrendering 25 points. And the goal is to play our best football. Okay, pure and simple, that's all it is. Let's make sure we're focused out there, physical, mental toughness, everything we do, all right, and then play hard. Play hard and play together. Doesn't change. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Each week is a different, a different dog, a different opponent, and uh, here comes Colorado State out of the Mountain West. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. So they go three tight ends and a tight eye on fourth down and three. Santeo rolls out to his right. He wants to run, throws it instead. Incomplete. The Hawks will take over possession. Santeo. I thought he could have run for the first down, but tried to squeeze it into double coverage. Let's go with a heavy package of a couple tight ends and a fullback. And they get the playoff just as the clock's about to run down. Goodson's free off the left side. 40, 45 yard line of the Hawkeyes. Really good blocking off the left side there by Mason Richmond. Boy, is that kid coming on? Boy, he had a great game last week, and you talked about him with Coach Ferentz. Hawks go first and 10 after a 27-yard run by Tyler Goodson to end the first quarter. Now they run a uh, slot receiver reverse, and the youngster, Arlen Bruce the fourth gets another first down as he zigs and zags his way across the field. Finally got those shoulder blades pointed to the north. Goodson, the lone setback, single receivers either way for the Hawkeyes. Petrus back to throw and runs a fade pattern. It is caught, and it's a touchdown, Iowa. A fade pattern down the Colorado State sideline to Keegan Johnson. Welcome to big time football, young man. Bellevue, Nebraska, stand up and take a bow. What a great throw. That ball had so much touch on it, it fell straight out of the sky. For those of you waiting for Iowa to open up the offense, voila! Petrus really put some air underneath that ball, just enough for the young freshman to run underneath it. He never broke stride. It'll never be that easy again. Santeo going to throw again. Now this time he's down. Logan Lee got to him before he could cock and throw. There's our spot and rose hammer hit first sack of the day. Just a great job of staying with it. He pushed the guard back and then just kept pushing the guard farther and farther back till he freed himself, sacked the quarterback. Santeo ate about an eight-yard loss. Third and long, empty backfield, five receivers at the Iowa 12-yard line. Here's a quarterback draw, and it's going to be a touchdown by Centeo. My goodness. I called it before they came out with that short field. Uh, this is quarterback all the way, and I mean there was nobody looking for the quarterback. Nobody. Petrus retreats from center. Now lobs it down the middle of the field. Has a man open. Caught and running is Keegan Johnson again. They're man on man in him. And so far, Keegan's winning that battle. Well, we've been waiting to see him. He, he has been, they've been bragging about him since his first practice here. Tyrone Tracy splits wide left. Nobody else out there on the flat. Hawks go with two tight ends. Play fake to Goodson. Now the quick slant is picked off. What is picked that? off. It is intercepted and going the other way. Can they catch him before he gets to the end zone? They will. Ty Tyler Goodson catches Robert Floyd, the extra defensive back, as Petrus threw it into a crowd. Tight eye with two tight ends. Santeo rolls out right. Throws caught. Wide open. Touchdown. Colorado State, and the Rams have taken the lead. And fifth-ranked Iowa on the short end of a 14-7 score.
The Heartland is brought to you by Hy-Vee, the official grocery partner of Iowa Hawkeye football. Hy-Vee, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. And by the University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Oh, how liberal will coordinator Bud Meyer get down here? Standing at his goal line as the quarterback. They do run the draw. Handoff, it's fumbled, and Iowa has it. There's the turnover inning we've been looking for. And Jack Campbell once again on the spot. But the ball might have been scraped away on that draw handoff. Well, it looked to me like he just dropped it. The fullback just dropped it. And uh, during the handoff. Oh, oh, oh. in the gun. Fullback Potabom, tailback is Goodson. Goodson goes in motion. They run the reverse. Tyrone Tracy gets to the corner. Touchdown, Iowa! Touchdown! Slot reverse, beautifully executed by Petrus. Yep, it's like the old Statue of Liberty play. He looked like he was going to throw it out to the other side, and then he just handed it back for six points. That's the direction that Goodson went in, and you know he's drawn a lot of attention from this Colorado State defense. And Tracy just trotted right to Petrus behind him, gave him the football, and he danced into the end zone. Here comes Caleb's run up. And a high end over end side winding kick. That is grabbed at the four yard line by Panunzio. He is pummeled. He is pronuncioed at the 20-yard line. Ooh. Jacobs now comes up to the line of scrimmage. They show blitz with Benson. Now he backs off. Now Centeno gets loose, running right, and forced out of bounds at the 22. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Now, who do you Incredible think? Incredible open field coverage by middle linebacker Jack Campbell. I mean, 250 pounds, and he's running with the quarterbacks. Well, punt it away. Oh, this one's a bomb. Backing up Charlie Jones to his 22. Heads for the near sideline. Now turns the corner, gets a block, and he's heading downfield. 40, 45, 50. He's into territory, Colorado State territory. Bumped out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Excellent blocking to spring him. Now two tight ends. Looks like they're going to go back to the same play. Wide open, Laporta. Touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. The Hawks have the lead back. Well, this big... Big throw has worked awfully good. Statue of Liberty of two big plays. It looked like the same play to the far sideline, only this time Spencer turned down the middle of the field and Laporta was running free. Big play in the football game. Fourth down and a yard and a half. They're going to run straight ahead and they lose another yard. The Hawks take over. One of the few times the Hawks blitz. So why wouldn't Dane Belton be right in the middle of it? Let's see what they could do here on third and long. Good protection. Petrus throws to the sideline and it is caught on a great catch in the Iowa boundary line. Grabbed by Nico Regani. He certainly has the leg. Here's the spot. Kick is on the way. It is good. Oh, is that a big kick? Final score, Iowa 24. Colorado State 14. Today's broadcast is sponsored by Extreme, powered by Mediacom, the internet preferred by Hawk fans. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless and the official wireless provider of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Being against Wisconsin in my home state, it was kind of like extra special for me just because my home state, my parents came to Penn State to watch. Iowa, the other way. Oh, and it goes right through the bloomer. Iowa, do you believe in the Hawkeyes? Jenny Kate with the goal, the junior from Brookfield, Wisconsin. Scoring the game winning goal was just the cherry on top, and I. I really didn't think it was going to go in after I hit it, but it did, and it was probably definitely the highlight of my college career and something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. I think 
initially stuff started happening, maybe in the Wisconsin game. And I had kind of been having ankle issues, so I've been taping my ankle, and I've been playing the first half of the Wisconsin game, and my feet were kind of tingling, and I was like, well, that's kind of weird. This doesn't usually happen to me. And I was noticing bruises, but I was like, oh, I'm a soccer player, like, I bruise, like, things happen. I don't think it was really until the UCLA game where I kind of noticed, like, something's not right. I think I started playing, honestly, when I was like three or four, my dad was my coach as a rec on the rec teams. My entire family plays soccer, all my siblings, I have three siblings, and so ever since I was little, we'd all just kick around in our backyard. It was mainly soccer, but I also played basketball, just because I liked having kind of the balance of two sports and helped me not really get burnt out on one or the other. Well, it was actually a morning before a high school basketball practice, like an open gym, and I was walking to my car and I actually passed out. And so we went to my pediatrician and took some blood draws. And then about a week or so later, they said, hey, so you have aplastic anemia? And I'm like, initially I was like, okay, like, what does that mean? I had no idea. Cause just because I think not a lot of people are really familiar with the disease just because it is pretty uncommon and it's a bone marrow failure. And so my bone marrow doesn't produce enough white blood cells to fight infection. It doesn't produce enough red blood cells to carry oxygen. It doesn't produce enough platelets to clot blood. And so people who suffer from this disease, they can get sick more easily. They can get tired and lightheaded and have headaches from not having enough oxygen and they can bleed or bruise more easily. They tested all my siblings to see if they were matches. And luckily my brother was a match, my older brother, Ryan. And so they were like, well, it's kind of a no brainer. A bone marrow transplant is the ideal treatment. You have a almost near perfect sibling match. He was so on board right from the start. It wasn't, oh, is it gonna hurt? Oh, how long do I have to recover? Oh, what do I have to do? It was, tell me what I have to do, I'll do it for her. Like, we weren't always close, but knowing that he would do anything for me to get me back to where I needed to be, I think meant a lot to me. After I was home for, I think, five months total, I came back at the end of March to school and it was right in time for soccer season, high school soccer season. And we ended up actually winning the state tournament that year. It was really an indescribable feeling just having gone through kind of a really hard past couple of months and then to be on top of the world. It was kind of like a complete 180. <laughs> Vividly remember this. I was in my room and I get a call and from an unknown number and I'm like, I'm just not gonna answer this because I don't know who this is. And then I get a voicemail and I'm like, Okay, so I listened to it and it's like, hey Jenny, like it's Coach Danny from Iowa. I saw your email and your highlight clip in the state tournament. I was wondering if you wanted to talk. And I was kind of like, oh my God, did that really just happen? Just because I thought I had no chance on playing college soccer. And it was just, I was really grateful for them kind of taking a chance on me just because they hadn't seen me play in a while, but I'm really, really thankful that they did because I'm so unbelievably happy here. In the first half of the UCLA game, everything was starting off fine. But then again, like my feet started tingling. I didn't know what was going on. At the very probably last five minutes of the first half, my like my vision around the edges was starting to just kind of like go blurry and go dark. And I was kind of like, this is like, something's not right. I'm, I'm kind of freaking out at halftime. I have to go to the bench and kind of like put a cold towel on my face with my trainer and kind of calm down. Cause I was, I think, Along with the symptoms, I was internally starting to panic and freak out like, what is going on? This isn't right. I know something's not right. And so I get home, I get a blood draw, I had a biopsy done and they're like, yeah, like your bone marrow is at whatever it was, like 25, 30% cellula cellularity. And so I was playing in the Big Ten tournament and then NCAA championship with 30% of what my bone marrow should have been. And so 30% of my blood counts should have been in, which explains why everything was happening. So they did some more tests and I'm like, yeah, this is probably a relapse of your aplastic anemia. I'd moved on from it and I had kind of left it in my past and the, just the thought of having to go through all that again, it, it like tore me apart. My doctor's back home, I had a phone call with him and he was like, we can get you to kind of limp along through the year, but if you want to get better and if you want to get back to playing soccer, like in my, in my eyes, you need another transplant. A lot of people who have to get bone marrow transplants aren't that lucky. They have to wait for months or years to find someone and for me, I was lucky enough to have one of my own family members save my life and didn't have to wait. Be The Match is an organization that's really near and dear to my heart, just having been through the whole process 
already once and now I'll be in the midst of it again. Be the Match not only does a great job of educating the community about this topic, but also getting people to sign up to save lives and raising money for people who don't necessarily have the resources to afford a transplant on their own. So obviously it's an unfortunate situation and I wish I didn't have to go through it again, but if I can kind of use this turn of events and use my story to not only raise awareness for a blood disorder that's not talked about too often and raise awareness for organizations such as Be The Match that does so much for so many people, then honestly I think it'll all be worth it. Like, who wouldn't want to help out a bunch of other people and kind of take lemons and make it into lemonade and hopefully everything will go according to plan. Hopefully I'll be out here playing soccer for wearing the Hawkeye jersey again in a year and so it's not something that I want to do but I know what I have to do and now that I know what I have to do I'm ready to just go on and tackle it head on. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. And by Atletico Physical Therapy. It all starts here. We're kind of on the same page on that one. Um, we both are kind of look, uh, thinking the same thing and we feel confident in those situations and you know we got the look we wanted and we just had to execute at that point. Um, I can't can't even describe the feeling when I got to the end zone. I mean it was just exhilarated you know it was numb really couldn't feel my body it was just I mean excited I could have provided a spark for the team at that time and you know got to celebrate with all the guys that was the best part. We, had, we got them backed up uh, we just Great special teams play by Tori got him down there. And then um, just honestly going out there and just playing hard, all 11 guys playing hard. Um, and, and the ball came out and it just ended up uh, good for us. And I was just lucky enough to be able uh, to be in the, the position to go make that play. Uh, but um, Wide Black and our defensive line, um, I'm pretty sure got a hand on and got that ball out. So um, all credit goes to him. But just uh, being able to capitalize on that and put, put our offense in a good position and just play good team football, um, that's what's going to allow us to keep improving and pushing it through. So. We kind of had it dialed up during the week and it, the, the play really wasn't supposed to come to me. It was really dialed up for one of our receivers, but I was wide open and just so happened to score. And so, yeah. yeah, so in a short week, you know, stuff's accelerated. Um, obviously, you know, you have to fit a whole week of preparation into one less day, but, uh, you know, I think we have a really good, really good plan, and the goal just becomes to, to win the preparation battle because, you know, we have the same amount of time that Maryland does. Um, but, you know, Maryland's a good team, you know, undefeated. Uh, they have a really good offense, really good defense. Um, you know, they, they, like to, they like to stack the box and, and, you know, make the run game tough, and, um, you know, that presents some, some challenges, it presents some opportunities, uh, but, you know, I'm excited to play. This has been a presentation from Learfield.